Okay, we're going to pick up where we left off from the last demonstration. We're talking about images, and I want to talk to you about the different file types that you would use in a web page. Um, there are some basic types of web images. You can't just use any old image in, in a web page. Uh, there are only certain accepted formats. One of the most common accepted formats is a JPEG. It's either got a three three-letter extension of .jpg, or sometimes you'll also see it as a .jpeg, as a four-letter extension. And those are actually two very slightly different versions of the same type of file type. Um, there is another uh, very short sort of PDF slide lecture that you should review that goes into a lot more specifics about the different file types, but I'm going to give you a really quick overview. Um, a JPEG image is an RGB mode image that stands for red, green, and blue, and that means that it has three color channels. And just so you know, each color channel supports up to 256 possible tones um, of red, of green, and of blue. So if you multiply those together, that ends up being the possibility of millions of colors. Okay, so because it supports millions of colors, Pictures like this one, uh, of this little hip trips section, that would be an example of a, a good use of a JPEG because you need millions of colors for a full spectrum of uh, possible values, okay, so that you can get good gradients and things like that. Now a JPEG does not support transparency, so you can't see through any part of a JPEG, um, and uh, it, does, it does, however, support compression. So what it does for a JPEG makes it special is that you can do different levels of compression so that the image uh, can be smaller in size. Of course the more you compress it <clears throat> the more quality you're throwing away and you're giving up. So you can make some decisions like when you're in Photoshop about how much compression you want to sacrifice the, the quality of the image for file size. So um, that's a JPEG. And in this case, in this example, if I were to inspect this element, you can see right here that this image is in fact a JPEG image. And I typically will save things as JPEGs if I don't have to have transparency and I need millions of colors. And the reason is because the file size can be a lot smaller than say with a full-blown PNG 24. Okay, now that brings me to my next file type that I use very, very commonly. And you're going to see more and more of this file type on the web now. Um, and that is a PNG 24, and PNG stands for Portable Network Graphic. Okay. Now, there are two different types of PNGs. There's a PNG 24 and there's a PNG 8. Okay. So a PNG 24 would be uh, an indication of how many channels, color channels I should say, how many color channels it has. Okay. Now, I said before that RGB mode is red, green, and blue. That's three channels. And I said each channel supports up to up to uh, 256 possible tones. That's also going to be true for a PNG 24. The difference is that what you know, instead of just calling it a PNG 3, for instance, because it has three channels, it's called PNG 24 because also each channel represents eight bits of information. So if you have eight plus eight plus eight, then you have 24. So you ended up having a 24-bit file, and that's where that PNG 24 comes from, okay, so that you basically have 24 bits in your file. Now, the one extra trick about PNG 24s that makes it really different uh, from a JPEG is that it does support transparency, which is really terrific. So you can see through things like up here in this Jet Setter uh, graphic. Jet Setter has transparency in between and behind the letters, okay, so that you can actually, here, in fact, I'm going to close this, so that you can actually see, as I move this around, you can see how you can see through the letters and into the background, and it looks pretty seamless, and it's really nice. Um, the other difference between a JPEG and a PNG24 is that a PNG24 does not support compression. So that means that it, by default, is typically a bigger file size. Um, it does support millions of colors, which is one of the reasons that it's such a lovely kind of image to use. Um, and the type of transparency that it supports is, uh, it's referred to as an alpha channel, 
Okay, so you have the RGB color channels, but then you also have an alpha channel. Alpha channel is a transparency channel, and it's like the the transparency that you would see, say, in Photoshop, where you can have different levels of um, transparency. So just in the same way that you can have 256 possible levels of light in, say, the red channel or the green channel or the blue channel, you can also have two, up to 256 different levels of transparency so that you can, for instance, see through these dots. These white dots that are repeating everywhere, those are uh, a PNG24, and what it is is it's basically a white dot that has a very low level of transparency, or has a very low level of opacity, I should say, has high transparency, low opacity, um, so that it's a, I don't remember exactly what the percentage is, but it's about maybe 25% opaque, so that only about 25% of the image is actually visible and the rest of it is transparency, so that you're basically able to see through these white dots through to the clouds that are behind them and uh, through to the wing and so forth. And you'll notice that in this case the jet setter uh, image is sitting on top of the white dots and the white dots are sitting on top of the air plane background, okay? So you can layer images, that's also very important to understand. And the way that you layer images is really dependent on where you're placing them, either in the HTML or in the CSS, but of course the CSS is tied to the HTML. So uh, it really depends on kind of how you're setting up your page, and you can almost think about creating your Photoshop documents in some of the kind of layers as you might also consider uh, making your HTML pages. Okay, so that's something that's important to remember. So the PNG24, all right, as a recap, supports millions of colors and uh, it supports an alpha channel for transparency. It does not have uh, compression and it is red, green, and blue with um, an alpha channel. Okay, <clears throat> now the other type of PNG is a PNG8, and I don't have a version of that in here, um, but a PNG8 is, uh, it's only one channel, which is, you know, basically what the 8 means, it's 8 bits or 256 possible colors, um, so it's just one channel, and that means that it uses what's called indexed color, okay? Indexed color for PNG8 is also pretty much exactly the same as the way that a GIF file works. It's .gif. Okay, GIF and PNG8 are very similar. They're both index color. They both support up to 256 possible specific colors, and that's it. Those are good for really basic, simple kinds of logo graphics and things that don't require lots and lots of um, gradients and different colors and things like that. You don't want to use, for instance, uh, a GIF or a PNG8 format for a picture like this one where you've got all of these green trees and you've got all these gradients up in the ceiling. What it does is it, it, is it does a thing called dithering or posterizing and it basically breaks those tones apart so that the picture looks very uh, low quality and sort of what a lot of people refer to as either pixelated or um, just a very bad quality image. Um, those are typically, as I said, for logos and some kinds of text, and they're not used as much anymore, except for whenever you need them and you can get away with using them because they are very, very small file sizes. So um, there's not really an example in this file. However, I did make an, uh, a version of this uh, white dot so that you could see the difference between uh, say a GIF file or a PNG8, that version of transparency versus a PNG24 version of transparency. Because a GIF file and a PNG8, they do support transparency, but it's a different kind of transparency. It only supports like spot transparency, and what I mean by that is it can only drop out specific colors. It can't do a gradient of transparency the way that a PNG24 can, where it's this very soft, seamless kind of, uh, like almost like a scrim that you can see through. Instead, it would actually drop out specific colors, and any color that it does show, it shows at 100%. 
Okay, so I'll give you an example. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and I'm going to right click, okay, um, to inspect element, just so I can get my developer tools to pop up. And of course it jumped to the section ID, but I know for a fact that my um, white dots are the background for my body, okay? And if I go down here and I look in my styles, let me open this up a little bit more, and I look inside of my styles, I can see this uh, background image for URL and it says images circles.png. Well, that's using a PNG 24. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how you can use the Google uh, Chrome developer tools to change something so that you can see what it would look like without actually permanently changing something. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start typing uh, in here. Okay, and I'm going to change where it says circles.png. I also have a file in there called circles.gif. Alright, and you can see automatically when I change it, it loads up that GIF file and you can now, I think, start to understand the difference of the kind of transparency that it offers. So the GIF file, all of the, pic all of the pixels around the circle are transparent, but the white itself can't be a level of transparency. It can either be there or not be there, okay? Whereas the PNG24 you see that the circles are there, but they have a layer of trans, they sort of have like layers or levels of transparency. So it's only about, I think, somewhere between 25 and 30% probably visible. Okay, so now automatically I think you can just see the difference right away as to how the difference of a PNG24 is and say a GIF or a PNG8. Now what you will notice down here is that this PNG24, I have it highlighted for its extension, it's just called .png. It doesn't say PNG24 or have any other kind of indication. The web browser just knows which one it's saved as because they have these special markers that are saved with the file and so the web browser knows exactly which, which version of PNG it is. So when you're saving your files out, and we'll go over that a little bit later, you will uh, make some choices during the saving process as to what kind of file you want it to be, whether it's a JPEG, PNG24, PNG8, GIF, etc. Okay. Now there is another file type, I'm not really going to talk about it though, and it's called a BMP file, it stands for bitmap file, and I'm not going to talk about it because it's hardly ever used anymore. It was one of the most rudimentary types of files a long time ago. It has a lot of limitations and people typically don't use them. Um, and so I'm not really going to talk about them, but do know that there is a, a file type called a .bmp or bitmap file that you can actually use, but uh, you'd be hard pressed to find one anymore in a website. Okay, so those are the file types.